Hey ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to uh, Statistics for Fun and Profit maybe. Um, today we're going to talk about outliers. I'm going to show you how to find the inner and outer fences and eventually to construct a box plot that will allow you to talk about the shape of your distribution. What I have here is I literally I have a set of data. I have 15 data points. And with those 15 data points, what I've done is I've gone over here and I've sorted them twice. I've got one in descending order. I've got one in ascending order. But because I've color-coded them by these quartiles over here, hopefully you'll be able to see that it really doesn't matter which way you sort it. What matters is which direction you count from. So the first step in identifying outliers is to create what we refer to as a five number summary and the five number summary is literally just made up of Q1, Q2, Q3, the highest and the lowest values. So I'm going to start with finding my quartile values. The way that I find my quartile values is I'm going to apply that formula that says that the P, whatever P percentile I'm looking for, is the location of it. It's found by simply taking P divided by 100 times N, number of values in the data set, and that we know that if we get a value other than an integer, we round up to the next whole um, number. So this is the formula that I have applied in order to find these three values right here. So beginning with Q1, I know that Q1 is the same thing as P25. 25 divided by 100 times 15 gave me 3.75, which is not a whole number, so I round up to the fourth. So what this is, the fourth, remember, is I, which is simply the location of the value that holds the um, location of the first quartile. So if you sort it in ascending order, then what happens is you count down until you get to the fourth value. If you sort it descending, then you count up until you get to the fourth value. But nonetheless, in each case, we'll see that Q1 is now equal to 1.89. Q2 is the same thing as P50, which we know is also the same thing as the median of the data set. Since I have 15, I can do it two ways. I can do this and say 7.5 rounds up to 8, 8, and find the 8th value. But I also know since it's the median, I know it's the center value right here. And because this is the dead center of the data set, doesn't matter which way you sorted. We simply know that it is the one um, above and below which the same number of values fall. So last but not least is Q3, which is the same thing as P75. 75 divided by 100 times 15 gives me 11.25. I round up to the 12th value, and I either count down to where I get to the 12th, or I count up and get to the 12th. But nonetheless, what I now know is that Q3 is equal to 4.17. Q2 is 2.74. Q1 was 1.89. And the order of these numbers makes sense because remember, P75 is the value below which 75% of the data value falls. So remember, as your percentile value increases, we expect the value that holds that place to increase as well. So remember I said we needed five numbers. Well, that's one number, two numbers, three numbers, here the fourth and the fifth. Simply the highest and the lowest. And what I know is that because I sorted it, I know that the highest number is 7.84 the lowest number is 1.68.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang on to these because these values are going to determine the length of the whisker in my box and whisker plots. But I'm going to use these three right here plus my IQR to find my inner and outer fences when I come back in like two seconds. All right, so we're back over here and we're ready to go ahead and start putting together our inner and our outer fences. And on the previous um, screen, we found that Q3 was 4.17 and Q1 was 1.89. We know that the definition of IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So if I make take Q3 minus Q1, then what I now know is that my IQR is equal to 2.28. So now I have Q3, Q1, and my IQR. And when I come over here for my inner and outer fences, I'm literally now just going to plug in values for Q1, Q3, the IQR, Q1, Q3, and the IQR, and I'll be done. All right, so what we've, or what I've done, I don't know what you guys have done, but I know what I've done. What I've done is, this was my four number summary over here. So once I've gotten that five number summary together, remember we said that that was all we needed. So what I've done is I've taken Q1 minus, 1.5 times 2.28 gave me a negative 1.53. What I know is that it's nice because those two values are actually the same, which is um, 3.42. And I literally know if I take 1.89 minus 3.42, gives me that first inner fence of a negative 1.53. And I have gone through and I have done the exact same math here, except here I take Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, and that gives me my inner fences. These are the ones that are going to be closest to the middle. Now I'm going to look at the outer fences. Still going to use the same value for Q1 and Q3, use the same value for the IQR. What changes here is now I want to go three times the IQR to get a little bit further out from the center of my data. So for instance here, what I literally did was I took 4.17 plus and then I multiplied three times 2.28 which gave me 6.84. And because I'm working on my outer fence on the top side, I literally just took 4.17 plus 6.84. And according to my $6 Walmart cal uh, calculator, that came out to be 11.01. .01. So um, now I've got inner and outer fences. And what I know is that when I start looking at my data, I'm going to be looking between for values that fall between 1.89 and my first lower inner fence of negative 1.53. My next lower outer fence is going to be a negative 4.59. When I go back and I look at the top of my data for big outliers, I'm going to look for things that are going to fall between 4.17 and that first fence of 7.59 and then that outer fence of 11.01. .01. So basically what it's doing is it's saying, let me see how far out of the norm my data actually falls. And that's where we're going to use this smallest and largest because I'm getting ready to show you a cool looking box plot.